Park Pass. How's everybody doing? Everybody's good? Yeah, no fine. Good, good. So we are going to start back where we left off in our last health class with the Venn diagrams. Some of you have completed it, some of you have not. So I want us to touch base and look back at this Venn diagram. It's dealing with social interaction and we're looking at my generation versus your generation, okay? So, we started with CD player, Walkman, community, home and phone for my generation. So these were some of the things that we discussed in the last class that were a great impact on my generation. So I want somebody to share with me what did you write that affects your generation? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, internet, cell phone, data, uh, internet. Okay, good. I think that's interesting that you mentioned daycare. So what would you say, Tyrone, that the daycare contributes to your social interaction? Uh, Did you go to a daycare when you, you were know, a kid? I, you know, no. They got both. Both of them were the daycare. The move from Kennedy coming from Kennedy, and I did it for a big old daycare. I think daycare was really good to mention because I used to be, I mean, it used to be fun as a kid. So. It's it's fun as a kid. You have an opportunity to go interact with other children at daycares, yeah. whereas in past times, I think daycares weren't as developed in my generation. You did have daycares back when I was a kid, but now I think daycares are much more established and developed, and they have better programs where children can be. Interactive with with other kids and develop play. I know sometimes, I know sometimes the children don't want to you know, feel comfortable interacting with other children. Right. So I think that a daycare, I think that a daycare is a, a good way to teach kids how to get along with other kids. Somebody else. What else did you put for your generation? I think daycare was a really really good one. That was great, Tyrone. Anybody else? And even if you didn't finish, if you're thinking about something, then you can add as well. Did you guys say cell phones? Yep. Perfecto. Did you write that, Tyrone? Anybody else write cell phone? Yeah. Cell phones is a really, really good one because if we're just honest, how much time do you guys spend on your cell phone? Oh, my God. We stay on it. We stay on it. So you guys spend like, okay, maybe out of, let, let's say out of 12 hours, because that's half of the day, right? How many hours would you say you spend either talking, texting, or doing something with social media on your cell phone? 12 hours. The first thing I do when I wake up is look oh, at it. Not so much. If not 12 hours, if I take my nap, then 10. You mean to tell me, Taylor, you spend 12 whole hours using your cell phone? I don't go nowhere with my group home. I don't know how to call that. Well, yeah, I do. Okay, so let's stop right there. How would 12 hours affect your social, emotional interactions by using a cell phone? It doesn't affect it at all. So that's half of a day. It teaches you how to be social because on social media, some people who can't say what they have to say to you. And then, yeah. That's right. So the positive thing social is it can be used as a tool to teach you how to be social because some people really are kind of nervous talking to people face to face. That's, it can be a crutch too. Like You can, you you can pretend like you're talking to somebody. I know someone that does that. Like They must spend at least... Uh, 
it's got to be over 12 hours on their phone. Like, if they're in, a, like, a gathering, like, they'll just stare at their phone. Like, I wouldn't do anything like that. Good. Okay. So, you know, cell phone is one that we really could focus on pretty much most of the class because in your generation or this generation, we spend a whole lot more time using the cell phone or cellular device interacting with people opposed to actually having face-to-face -face conversations, okay? So let's look at pros and cons and then we'll move on. Pros and cons of cell phone, okay? So Taylor said you can learn how to talk. Then a con about it is that you don't know how to talk in person. Like it okay. takes away your social skills in person or whatever you want to say. That's why a lot of kids in this generation like they meet on like dating sites because they don't know how to like approach a girl and you know, yeah, stuff right. like that. Yeah, right. I would never do that. Because yeah. you find you find the wrong people on there. Mm -hmm. Who am I find? <laughs> All right, so, so question class, question. If you spend, my goodness, 12 whole hours on the cell phone, like literally all day, do you think that's healthy? What is it taking away from if you're spending 12 whole hours a day? I want you just to exercise. think about that question. Wow. Taylor said it could be taking away from exercise. Right, because if you're talking on the phone 12 hours, right, David, you can't be getting the appropriate amount of exercise you need. Well, I don't know about y'all, but when I talk on the phone, I pace back and forth. I, I walk in circles around tables and stuff. <laughs> so if you're pacing, it gets me hyped up. my question is, are you avoiding other things and other people if you're spending excessive amounts of time on the cell phone? No, because I interact with everybody equally. That's why nobody wants to get on the phone with me. Okay, anybody else want to contribute before we move on? This is a good discussion for the warm-up. Let's think of at least one more pro and one more con. What's another good thing about being able to use a cell phone, not necessarily for 12 hours, but having that as a tool in this now generation? It's a good job. Say more. What do you mean? You can make money off Like everybody uses their phones, everybody breaking their phones, everybody needs somebody like an IT person. You make a lot of money off of it. Is it fair to say that having a cell phone these days are very instrumental and resourceful? Yeah. Instrumental you because you can use it for so now. many different things. You know they have cell phone pregnancy tests now? You can hook your pregnancy up to your cell phone? I did not know that. This one commercial, I seen it. So we're gonna we're gonna say that cell phones are using instruments and resources. Resourceful. One more thing that might be not such a good thing to use your cell phone so much. What's a con? Reclusive behavior. Wow. Good. Would you like to teach this class? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That's good. That's good. Reclusive behavior. You like to put the camera on now? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's see. Oh, okay, so as far as reclusive behavior is concerned, I want to make sure that everybody understands what that means, because that's kind of a, a big term, a broad term. Does everybody know what David means when he says reclusive behavior? No. Okay. All right, so, I mean, I know what it means, but I'm trying to think of an example to get you guys to understand. Like outrage? That's what it sounds like. Sound like you do Outrage means it's just totally angry, you know, or, or out of control. Yeah, Reclusive, let's think about uh, an animal. Let's <laughs> think about uh, a bird. A bird is free, right? A bird can fly. So a bird has the liberty to go wherever he or she wants, and it's kind of a happy animal because it's, it's free, it's not caged. No, <laughs> oh, I'm getting to it. <laughs> think about think about a snail. That snail on his back. Snail, snail is slow as you don't know what. Oh, you right. shy. You don't know how to interact. Absolutely. Think about think about a hermit. Does anybody know what a hermit is? Type one. A hermit frog. A hermit. What about a crab? Ooh. They have a shell, and if anything gets close to them and they feel offended or they feel threatened, 
They can just go into their shell and hide and not deal with people. That's a turtle. Not deal with any other animal. The turtles can do that too. Turtles as well. Very good. So a person who is reclusive is a person who is withdrawn or isolated or shut away from the whole world, sleeps a lot, kind of gets over to feeling sad or maybe feeling depressed. So that would definitely be a con and that would definitely negatively affect your health, your social and emotional health. Okay? Very good. So we're getting ready to do some reading and I want you guys to think about what things affect your social health. Five questions or five different answers rather. I'm going to do one since we have four students in the class today. But I want you to think about what things affect your social health. So I'm going to do a little bit of reading. <coughs> and once I read, we'll come back to that. Okay. Y'all are doing a wonderful job today. Thank you so much for your attentiveness. I am very impressed with your engagement in the class today. Okay, so we're going to talk about a term called self-concept. Yourself. Has to deal with you, yourself, your person. Okay? So, what is it? What do you think it is? What do you think it means? And get your brains turning today. Put your thinking How you feel about yourself? How you feel about yourself? Mm -hmm. So, what about that word concept? I know you've heard it before. Wait, there was no disability guys. All right, so we'll keep going. Self-concept is our ideas and who we are and what our personality is like. The key word to remember is ideas, okay? So listen carefully as I read, and then we'll go back to what things affect your social media. We all have natural positive esteem within us. In addition to this natural esteem, what other people tell us about ourselves shape our self-concept. For example, your teacher in music class says, you have a good sense of rhythm. That may shape an idea about your musical talent. So we already see clearly that concept deals with ideas. Okay. The actions of others may also help shape self-concept. For example, team captains always try to choose a certain girl for their team. She learns that others think she is a good athlete. These messages from others are called social messages. Social messages about you may not always match your self-concept. For example, you may think of yourself as shy and not very interesting. Your friends, however, think you are quiet and sincere. They tell you you have a good sense of humor. In this case, the social message you heard did not match your own belief. Sometimes you may decide to change your belief about yourself. Sometimes you won't want to change your belief about yourself. For example, you drop a ball during a baseball game. Your friends tell you you're not very good and you should quit the sport. You know that you made four other very good plays in that game. Everybody's paying attention. You believe you really are good at baseball, so you decide not to change your belief. All right, I'm almost done. No matter what message you receive from others, these social messages all play a part in forming your self-concept. They reflect your social esteem. 
Social esteem is, take a guess, what do you think it might be? How you feel about interacting with people? I love it. Also, how you feel about the camera? I mean, how you feel about being around people? Let's keep going. Social esteem is how others value you. So I like the way you define that. But we're going to say how others value you. All right? If others have a good opinion of you, you are more likely to have high self-esteem or low self-esteem. High. high is correct. High is correct. Good. Unfortunately, this also works the other way. If others do not seem to value you, you are more likely to have what kind of self-esteem? Low. Low self-esteem. So, with that being said, a lot of times our friends and our peers, people we go to school with, family members, really affect how we feel about ourselves. That plays into social esteem. And then, just some of our own thoughts. What you think about yourself plays a big part in your social emotional health. Yes, Taylor. What people think about me, I don't really care because I know what I am and I know my social esteem is very high. Mm -hmm. Like my mom can tell me, she tell me all the time, like my social esteem is too high. And I'm not as busy as I think I am. Well tell me that when I'm twenty six and I'm making all these millions of dollars and I'm not gonna give you nothing. Right. So you're telling me that your self-esteem is, is really how you feel good about yourself and other people really don't have that degree of influence. They don't hold that amount of weight. No, because at the end of the day, I'm the one who knows everything that goes through my mind and what happens with me. Okay. So I would say I think it's a really good thing that you feel good about yourself and that other people don't negatively affect how you feel. But I would also say that it's good to know what your friends and family and even people in your social circle and sometimes even strangers. It's good to know what people think about you so it gives you an idea of how, how you are. are. That's right. I, I listen to them. I just, if they try to put me down or too high up. So how you're perceived. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when I walk through the door every morning or when I come through the door every afternoon and getting ready for class, what is your thought about me? Do you think that I'm going to teach you a good lesson today? Do you think that I'm going to come in and fuss? Do you think that I'm mean? Do you think that I'm boring? I'm just going to morning thinking nothing. I think about sleep. <laughs> you might think about sleep in the morning because you might still be sleepy. But what do you think about people when you see people? It plays a really important part in how people view themselves. So really, if you think about it, we really do care what people think about us. Do you want people to think bad about you? Do you want people to think that you are a negative person, you're a bully, you are standoffish, you have a poor attitude? Do you want people to really think that about you? No. No, but if they do, I know what I am. I, I appreciate your comment. No, so you know. about. What about you, Taekwondo? How do you feel about how people think about you? Well, you know what? You, you might be tired, and it might be time for you to go home. So in this moment, you might feel like, you know, it really doesn't matter. But I would be willing to bet that you really do care what at least some people think about you. All right, so let's go back to what things can I ask you? Okay, I'm sorry, Tyrone. How do you think about how people feel about you? Hey, whatever they think about me, what they think about me. Who is one of the most important people in your life? Mom. Your mom. Your mom is probably the most important person in your life right now. So what she thinks about you matters. Yes? What do you think your mom thinks about you? I think I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you what I know she thinks about me. She thinks I'm, she think, uh, I'm smart, I'm smart young man. Smart cousin, Charles and Hanson, young man. You know what I'm saying? 
So she thinks that you're smart, you're intelligent, you're charming, you're a handsome young man. Do you? She thinks it's time to put the camera. I mean, she thinks. Um... Let's let's stop focusing so much on the camera. It's okay. If the camera is is more so to focus on me, not you. So it's okay. But I do want to ask you a question. I want to ask you: Is there anybody that you think? Tyrone that might not think so positively about you. You're doing a great job. You're doing a really good job. Is there anybody that you might think, hmm, this person doesn't think so well about me, or this person doesn't like me, or they think I'm a bad person? You don't have to call names, but I just want you to think, is there somebody that might think negative about you? Oh, maybe that person don't think that it's time to... Okay, we're going to move on. No, I'll let you think about it. Um, yeah, let me think about it. All right. So I gave you guys a little bit of time at the beginning of class to think about what things affect your personal social health. All right. I'm going to start. I didn't thought about it now. Well, I'll come back to you. Give me a second. So one thing that affects my social health is time management. So Travis, that's what I have to tell you about. Hold on a second. It's 217. You're talking about time management. It's 217. You say, let's start and let's end. So I need you to be patient because we've got a late start today. And so when I'm trying to gather everybody, get everybody settled, then we kind of get off track with time. So we'll be done in about five minutes, okay? Five minutes. Doing soup. All right. So for me, Time management affects my social health because if I don't manage my time well, then I'm not able to really interact with my friends and family the way I want to. Sometimes I get really caught up with work and get really caught up with other things, responsibilities. Um, All right. You gotta take video. <laughs> Tyrone, what might affect your social health? See, it might actually nothing would affect my social health. Okay, so I'm gonna write nothing. And we'll come back and talk about that because I'm Besides gonna, my temper, then I'm gonna stop my, my, my social health. I'm going to challenge that because I'm willing to bet that there's things that you might not realize that do affect your social health. All right, Please. Taylor. I'm impatient. Patience. That's a good one to think about. Okay. Wow, I haven't heard that one before. That's a big one too. That's that's detrimental to how you interact with people. I haven't heard a student mention that, and that's really really good to consider. And one last one, Taekwon, did you think of one? So we'll put a question mark right here for Taekwon. Want you to go home and think about it, okay? And when we come back to tomorrow's class. Then we'll he talk said honestly. Taekwondo said honestly. I mean, y'all. No, don't speak for Taekwondo. We're going to allow him to, to mean, think of his own. We're going to allow him, him to think about his own. All right. So we're going to wrap up right there. Hang on for a second, Taylor. Hang on for a second. Take your seat. Don't wrap up. Let's do a quick review 30 seconds of what we talked about today. So, our Venn diagrams. What are we spending excessive amounts of time on? Most people would be willing to say in this class, right? Cell phone. Most people in the class would be willing to say cell phones, spend uh, a lot of hours. Pros and cons. Everybody listed one pro, one con. Most of you did a wonderful job today in class. Some of you could use a little bit more work on responding and following the direction of the instruction. And we did health, social, emotional discussion with what things affect your social health. We learned two different terms today. Self-concept means how you feel about what? Yourself and social esteem. They define it really well. How other people All right. Good for you. And we will pick up tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you guys. He said he was like,